The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Monday, Monday, June 27th, and it is a little after 11 a.m. in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for today's show during this Open Lang Monday. So Open Lang Monday means that you can call in and talk about anything. What's on your mind? And I'll be, give, be happy to give my commentary on it. Uh, but I have a one or two things that I found interesting that happened in the news this week that I... I would like to discuss and like to know your opinion on it. Like, uh, first of all, let's talk about some crown land. The other day, the Minister of National Security gave the persons who occupy in the Kamika Road area, the wetlands that area, 14 good days to vacate the area. 14 good days. And it's now, it's a countdown. It's like, like six more days to go. Yesterday was seven good days. And I'm listening to the narrative, and the, there are two sets of people on this land, by the way. There are the immigrants, and then there are the behemoths who have occupied the land. And both are saying they ain't going nowhere. They don't care what the Minister of National Security is saying. That's their home, this is the land they're occupying, and they're moving. So I said, let me go and investigate what exactly is going to happen at the end of this 14 days? I remember, and, 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 and uh, listeners, I want you to know, well, I want to know, if you remember, I remember when there was an injunction made, you know, by that, 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 that attorney, Fred Smith. He, he applied for an injunction where they said that no, the government, I'm trying to get my words right, the government cannot interfere with any type of shanty town. You can't bulldoze it. You can't move it. And in return, the residents are unable to build any additional uh, areas on the shantytown. So I'm trying to say, what law, what leeway does the Minister of National Security has? Is he able to go and, and push things down even though there is a, 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 a sitting injunction at this present time? See, I found that interesting, right? Then I, I, I see that these people are claiming that they put in an application to get crown land. And the application is pending because the government hasn't answered this yet. So in the meantime, what they decided to do was find any crown land and occupy it. And they found this wetland and they said, this is what we want. This is what I'm going to claim. And by what, what, what the quote was, over their cold, dead bodies that they're going to move. See, I'm, I'm a little concerned for how, how law-abiding behemoths, and I guess by extension immigrants, uh, will say on their, they're moving besides their cold, dead bodies. That's concerning. That sounds like war. Sounds like they plan to have some kind of fisticuffs. And I'm not sure if, the, how that's going to look, you know, seeing armed police officers coming there and physically moving bohemians in particular. That ain't good luck. So I expect at the end of this 14 good days, them seeing people are going to be living right there. And, and this is what I'm concerned about too. These people are quite aware of the quieting act. They, they plan to claim this land. The, the, the one lady there says she already been there four or five years. There are other people who say they've, they've been there for a long time. They plan to claim this land. But there's a caveat to that. To claim the land with that quiet and title, you got to be living on the, uh, this land uninterrupted. But surely this is an interruption. Surely someone is saying that you, you're not supposed to be there. So that should be interesting. 
So I have a text here. It says, Great show as usual. Has a friend or family member when we travel to Miami 15 minutes before we land, start speaking in record. Okay. I guess that was for Aaron. So this is my, this is my, my text here. CA, here's my question. What is the government doing with the 40-plus shanty towns throughout our country? Are they armed, are armed officers going to get them too? But they have an injunction, so the armed officers can't get them. So armed officers got to target the people who just move. I see I have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Good morning. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You know something, my brother? This is a good topic. I believe I might be born before my time. You see, part of the problem stems from Mr. Key, who bought those people the farm in Abaco. Mr. Christie gone and buy that thing to kill the baby. No, I was going to talk to him for months and years and years. He bought that thing. Not to kill the Haitians in America and the China. Don't thank the killer baby. To be me, people, thank you, Lord. It's time we stand up. So let them put this up. Don't fight for us. Let them do their purpose. Let me see if, if, if Mr. Ray and Mano can kill us, behemoths. That's why I be me, people. I, I tell you all, it can be the civil war in this country directly. Fight the human, stand up, and the time is out of our country. Let them take my call. Call you sound passionate. I ain't believe in that fighting and no civil war happening. But I understand what you're trying to say. Bahamians are frustrated. But you can't just go and take the crown line. Can you imagine if everyone started doing that and said, man, this is my piece right here? You know? Especially those good pieces out, out west and out east. You know? So there's a process. And the process is not saying I apply and I plan to take it. Surely something is wrong with this, right? And I see that they're also, uh, <laughs> the Minister of Social Services, uh, in my opinion, blamed the former prime minister, said that the former prime minister in a statement said, all Bahamians deserve crown land. And because of that, these people took it up upon themselves to say, man, since the prime minister said we deserve it, I'm going to take it. So because of that, they have some type of right. And I, I'd say that don't make no sense to me. That don't make no sense to me. So that's one of the things I want to discuss. And if you want to call in, go ahead call in at 323-6232, and 325-4259. And we'll discuss it. Because I, I'm sure there's an injunction which, which, which does not allow, which prohibits the Ministry of National Security for interfering. But I might be wrong. I ain't no lawyer. But I see I have another call there. Go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? Caller, you there? No? If you'd like to make a call, please. I see I'll get another text says CA, the injunction is only against demolishing structures. They can still find the people for illegal presence and illegally constructed structures. Uh, I guess that's technicality, but that means they still can live there. And I, 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 boy, this could be some, some, some serious things in the future. You know, you, you, you can't just manhandle Bahamians, though. You could do that to immigrants, but you can't do that to Bahamians, man. And I say, I don't like the look. You know, I hear the, the, the threat say, move. You have 14 good days, but I, I, I don't see it happening. I see you have another caller there. Go ahead, Nigga, caller. How are you today? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for calling. That's there. good. Uh, you said something about illegal immigrants in the back there also? Yeah, man, they have, they have two that groups. That is incorrect, sir. I live... Uh, so right no right illegal there. immigrants there? No, sir. No, sir. So I've been going in the back there for almost 23 years, mm -hmm. okay? There, the one time about, uh, about almost 12 years ago, the illegal immigrants tried to uh, set up a shanty town and they were removed. There is nobody in the back there that is illegal. And the majority of those persons that were in the back there for about 15 to 25 years already have their, 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 their papers for their land, okay? But these persons came and cleared on from, uh, from, uh, from, from Bacardi Road all the way to Carl Harbor uh, in less than a year. And they cleared the, most of those places that came in acres and acres of land. And that particular portion of the land is Honeycomb Rock, okay? There ain't much farming you can do on that side of the land. The, the best part of the land for farmers is on the northern side in the back there, sir. I tell you, I for wasted area on many occasions, and I'm one of the persons that broke that particular story, okay? And what's, what's taking place? Uh, you can acquire government grand land. It takes you about uh, 11 or 12 years to acquire government grand land, and you have to first get permission from the government, not because they acknowledge your, your application means that it gives you to go ahead to go do anything on that land. It doesn't, okay? So you have to either follow the law or you're actually breaking the law. And the Minister of National Security, he has a right to do what he's doing, 
to give them ample warning that they must vacate the land. And if, if take my word, uh, Mr. Nuri, go and pass that area right now. Poisons are right there, still billing right now as we speak. I just passed at Donald West, okay? Man, I appreciate your call, man. You give us some you, insight. And, and I'm sure this, this could add more pepper to the soup. The soup. But thanks very much for calling. I, see one, I have, see have another caller there. Go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? Caller, you there? Hi, good morning. How are you doing, ma'am? Go ahead. What's your comment? Um, I'm listening to the um, It's amazing. Because there are hyphens there. Because if there weren't hyphens there, or you know, 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 whether they get their papers by now or not. The point is, they were there illegally. They were there known to the same people who tried to run the other people from there, who tried to run the behemoths from there, who did nothing over the years. And now all of a sudden, you try to manhandle behemoths. You try to manhandle behemoths, there's a better way to do it. Then they tell you all this baby step and, 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 and tiptoe around illegals in this country. Why don't you do the same thing for the humans? Why? Because by the time you get to, to looking at it, it could be so much time I've already passed and you can't move them no more. That's the reason why you try to rush the process. And I don't think the Minister of National Security have any right to be out there fooling with those Because uh, remember now, when Lincoln did that, one of the things he showed us was the Haitian man fucking up the gates to the Haitian woman say she didn't want nobody on her property. Her property. So, ain't, ain't, so, so she, ain't, she ain't foreign then. Just because she have a, a Creole accent, you don't believe she's Bohemian? I know that everybody there is legal. Did he do that? Or he just assuming that because they've been there so long? Call, I appreciate you call, man. It's, it's, a serious, it's, call, I appreciate you. I can assume you know who I am from my call. Because I call like this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you call. Thanks for calling in. Thank you who I am. <laughs> Thank you Thank you for calling in, ma'am. I appreciate it. I see you have another text here. It said, good day. An injunction is not forever. The government is just dragging their feet because they don't want to deal with the shanty towns and illegal immigrants. And it has been a while. I thought they would have solved this by now and started bulldozing some shanty towns. But uh, to my knowledge, the injunction is still there. Uh, I have another conversation I, I wanted to discuss, right? Um, should naturalized Bohemians be allowed to be a JP? You know, a justice of the peace. And this came up on social media where there was a concern, right? And whether persons who, who are naturalized, you know, is there a, a national security risk to, to, for them to have a JP license? Me personally, I say once you naturalize, you have access to everything that is Bahamian. You are Bahamian now, and we shouldn't uh, interrupt that process. But there was an old cry, and I said, I'll bring it up. So if you have any opinion on that, you can call in for that too. Right? I see I have another caller there. Go ahead, caller. Thank you very much for calling in. Hey, morning, Seattle. I mean, I'm seeing you, see you in Yuri. I mean, seeing Adam. Hello. I'm, I can hear you loud and clear. It's a little crackling, but I can hear you. I hope my phone don't turn off. Um, but, 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 Mr. Yuri, you, you can't have people calling your talk show because, you know, people respect you. All right? You can't have people calling your talk show, but people that the government buy tanks to kill behemoths, that, that ain't nothing to say, man. That's, and, and you know something? The person who calls, call, you's a big grown man. Despite the fact of what might be happening, is a way of presenting yourself to the public. And Mr. 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 Nuri, you, you are the talk show host. And I can say this, right? And I can go on record and say this. You had a certain PLP call used to call the talk shows. And when he called people's names, you know they do them? They buy him. And I'm not taking his side, but I'm talking about being fair. All right? You can't be calling and talk so saying them kind of things, man. Kind of show respect, man. And you're absolutely right. But as you know, I don't call any names on this show at all. I always no, call no, titles. I'm, not, I'm just letting you know. Mean, I'm not saying you, right? You but know. I'm saying, right, as a talk show host, when you see pre people like that start to run on with foolishness like that, cut them, man. And I appreciate right? for, that. For me to call a talk show and say, uh, menace them or do something to harm the people, I'd never do that. No matter if I'm against the government. And that gentleman who called it, I, I... Thank you very much for that input. And I will uh, remember to always cut people when they, when they, when they continue to talk uh, odd things. But thank you very much for that. And I, I appreciate that recognition. But I see I have another caller there. 
Go ahead, caller. Thank you very much. Go, hold it. Mr. Nuri, how are you? I'm always good, man. Blessings to you. Awesome, so awesome. Mr. Nuri, we all as behemoths understand what is going on in this country with this crime lab, right? Mm -hmm. We know that there's a fraction of behemoths who run as a group of independents who wanted to win an election. And because they did not, they are trying to get the handful of supporters that they have to rebel against the governing party who the Bahamian people has elected. Now, this was started shortly after the election, and these people know exactly what they're doing, all right? They know a little bit of law, all right? And, but they know for the most part that what they're doing, everything they're doing is illegal. But their thing is they're going to do it anyhow and force the government to either arrest them lock them up or whatever so that they can say that the government is locking up behemoths and stuff. This thing has been calculated from day one by a certain uh, group of persons, and they know exactly what they're doing. They are wrong. It does not represent behemoths because the Bahamas is a country of laws. We have laws. Whether you are illegal or whether you are natural-born behemoth or whether you migrated here, we have laws in this country, and the laws should be ahead to, all right? We should not just become a, a bunch of renegade people who wants to go on crown land and say the government has to force us or lock us up or start killing us or whatever have you, because that does not represent the type of behemoths that we want to, 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 to inherit this land. We want to be a, a civilized citizen who adhere to this country's laws, all right, and do things by the right way whether we are legal or illegal, okay? So this is a bunch of nonsense, and it needs to come to an end, all right? This is foolishness. This does not represent civilized behavior. So, you know, we, we know who these people are and what they're doing, but the government needs to find some form of way to deal with this foolishness, man, because it is going too far, and it needs to stop. It just really needs to stop. Call you an oracle. You. I appreciate that that that, that, that statement you made, and I, and I and I enjoyed it. So thanks very much for calling. Thank you. Excellent. So I, I have another text here. Say this situation is very unfortunate, and uh, the government finds itself maybe maybe setting precedents. And if they don't solve this crown land dilemma, if if they were to approve it, oh, if they were to approve it, it'll be dangerous, setting the precedence, right? That's what I assume that the texture is trying to say. But I see I have another caller there. Go ahead, caller. And Yuri, what's say? Man, it's always good, man. It's a golly day in this dark universe. Yes, man, you know that, for real. But we got to keep it godly. The thing is, uh, uh, you shouldn't take away uh, people's constitutional rights, freedom of speech. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. If somebody expressing their, their view over the radio, they have the right to do it. Or you or the radio would be uh, uh, destroying their constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. My other point is, right? Mm -hmm. The Queen put the, the, the crown law in escrow for the Bahamian people. Mm -hmm. Why is not being dealt with in that manner? Um, well, you know, the government is in charge of this escrow land, like you said, and they are the ones who will manage it, and, and that's how it is. I find well, that... And then give the people some sort of... Uh, what See, you now, now you, Raymond, you're trying to change the law. You, I just no, tell I'm you... No, I'm trying you, to change I the just, law. I want to act by the law. If the queen, right, who is the head of state, uh -huh. put the Bahama crown land in the escrow for the Bahamian people, you missing a step. To? You're missing a step. So let's, so change, let's change the wording and say if the queen put the government in charge of the escrow of the land. Let's yeah. say it like that. Say it like that. Uh, the Bahamian people put them no. in charge because the Bahamian people <laughs> are, who, are the people that voted for them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, I understand your point, Raymond. And, you, I, and you, I see your you passion. You agree. Don't say you understand because if the Bahamian people didn't vote for them to be there, they wouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. And the Bahamian people know that uh, the queen put it in their scroll for them. Yeah. Y'all gotta stop this foolishness, this nastiness, what's happening in this country. Thank you. I appreciate you, Bremen, for calling. Uh, do we have another caller there? No more calls? I see um, Dame Marguerite Pinglin is celebrating her 90th birthday, and I extend birthday greetings to her. 
She's an awesome lady. And I see on social media, the question was asked, what um, has Lady well, Dean Margaret Pingman done for the Bahamas? I was offended by the question because I said, everyone should know that. That's like a general uh, knowledge type question. And the idea that there are people asking uh, is offensive to me, right? Um, there was a time when politician wives stayed in the background. There was a time when the, all that the women did in politics was to cook fritters and fry chicken and fry fish and sell. They were not on the front line. Um, Dame um, Marguerite Pinlin uh, of mixed race came from Andrus as a, I'd say, poor or working class lady, right? And she rose to the occasion, representing us uh, with elegance and grace and charm and with stature and uplift a whole nation, you know, especially women to say, well, I want to be like her, right? To emulate her. And the idea that people um, are still questioning what, what she has done for the Bahamas is, to me, is offensive. Uh, and, and she was very active inside the political game and uh, not necessarily being the background frying fish. I mean, at one point in time, they prepped her to run on, on, uh, for South Andrus, you know, and, and we know what she did as governor general. And so I took an exception to this and I, and I want to extend appreciation to her on air. And again, wish her a 90th birthday uh, greetings to her. I see you have another caller there, caller. I mean, uh, yeah, producer. Go ahead, uh, caller. Uh, hey, 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 um, um, see, see, um, I got cut off. You, oh, you got as cut a off Bahamian, it. As a Bahamian, right, let me ask you a question. Do you do everything in this country when it comes to as far as living the right way? As far as, like, say you want to get gas, you pay for gas, you got to pay light bills. You do everything the right way, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now, my question is to tell a lot of people in this country. If I want a piece of crown land, there are procedures that, as I was told from the minister who is in charge of that, that you have to go through, right? But I have to realize that it's a process of things. And, and, and let's be real. I'm not taking sides for the government. I don't speak for them. They can speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know how much people's names have been submitted from Mr. Christie time about Crown Land? So that meaning now... As me being a bohemian who contributes and pay everything in this country, right, I could go and take a piece of land and go sag and go clear it down, and that's my own. That's how I go. So what precincts is those who are behind the setting for others? Because at the end of the day, if I go and take someone's land over, and especially if I find out that that's the government land, and the government decides to give me notice to come off the land. What must I do? What, must I just lay down there when they decide to come? Well, Bahamian people, if you all want to go out there and you feel that that's the course you want to be on, well, go out there. Well, I can tell you this. We have a lot of police stations in Nassau. And guess what? You cannot beat the law. You could try to work around the law, but you can't beat the law. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Nuri, I think that if the relevant people went to now Prime Minister with the, with the, with the, with the heart he has, he would have sit down with them and he would have tried to work it out the best way he can for them. But this, this, that, that crew was on this whip from government, from the past government to this government. So at the end of the day, Bahamian people, Yes, we entitled to Crown Land, but we also entitled to going through things the right way, Mr. Newey. Because at the end of the day, when you get that government stamp that you got approval for that Crown Land, Mr. Newey, nobody can say nothing to you. But when you decide to go there, get a barco, clear down, and say that's yours, then that's a problem. And I agree with you. You're absolutely right. That's Thank a problem, you, bro. Thank and you very I much to it. Human people, you know, stand up and fight for what you believe in. But before you stand up and fight, fight what the cause is about. Sometimes people fight for attention. Sometimes people fight for in political um, 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 attention and all kinds. Of, you have a lot of attention seekers in this country. And from the progressive liberal party that when, won the government, they're coming out one by one, one by one. But have a good day, my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling.
Do we have another caller there? Go ahead, call him. Call him. Channel feedback there. Hello? Oh, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Oh, I uh, sorry. I, I actually was just calling you. You talked up before I even noticed. Go ahead. It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. Uh, yes, like I was saying, um, with the gentleman was talking about just now. Um, I don't know about most other people, but for me, the crown line situation is a, has, has always been a sore slum for me. After seeing the motor line that the Haitian men came and I just took out there. And it seems like nobody can tell them anything about it. Mm. You know, and that bothers me and it has always bothered me. So I think the, the, the hype up about this crown line, and I think Lincoln Bain realized that Bahamians were um, upset from that time when it comes to crown line. And I, and I think that's why he's using it to, to, to make his point. And if the government go after them the way I think they plan to, they can more than likely cause themselves the next election. Because I've heard the gentleman say, well, the behemoths voted for the government, but he needs to remember the count. Remember the amount that did. And then remember the more amount that did not. You understand? So they need to tread lightly. And he, like he said, there's a minister for the crown land thing. Let him deal with it. Tell me, tell me in Monroe, go deal with the crime. Find out why these people are getting killed on a daily basis. Three, four persons a week. That's his portfolio. Deal with that. Okay, thank you very much, caller. I have a next caller there. Okay, go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Caller, can you hear me? Can you hear me now, caller? Yes, I can. Go ahead, sir. Uh, no, I just wanted to talk on the guy who called and say. Talk about uh, we have laws and we should be citizens who abide by laws. But I think he was contradicting himself when he was saying that that the country uphold law when the illegals are just there. So I don't I don't know what he was saying. He was contradicting himself. So he's only talking for one side for the behemoths that saying that the law should only they should obey the law. Why the others? Disobey the law. And I hear you. And, and, and I think uh, what DeWitt was trying to say that the law needs to be enforced. It needs to be enforced. Well, I don't mind it being enforced, but be enforced for everybody. Yes. And um, at this present time, you know, there is an injunction. I, I think that um, both governments and former administrations have tried to deal with the Shantytown situation, you know, and, and they keep on coming through, coming up against the. You know, that there, were there, there was an injunction before this injunction. Uh, yes, and this is and why you they know continue. that more shanty towns were built after the first injunction. Mm. But the good thing is, we have a different government in house, and this government is 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 determined to enforce the law. And we see oh, that. Well, 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 I hope that they do. But I hope that they do it for everyone. So let's let's support them in the meanwhile, and and let's see, watch and see, and uh, see what they do. Is that okay. fair? That's fair, eh? Yeah, that's fair. Okay, then let's let's see what they do. It should be All interesting. Right. Okay, thank you very much for calling, uh, caller. Do we do I have another caller there before I continue? I do. Go ahead, caller. Yes, how you doing, Noe? Yeah, Alan Johnson. Go ahead, see Alan. Yeah, I hope you just give me some leeway. Uh, first of all, uh, I understand what being Monroe did in making the notice, but I don't think that we have uh, a minister of national security that's a king that can make an edict by a statement. The legal process of notification uh, in writing. Uh, in fact, if you go back to the previous injunctions, that was some of the issues that was brought up in the judicial review. They are uh, failure to notify the people and even believing by posting something on some trees and some doors as a means of notification. And it, I think that was rejected. But let's talk about the issue of Crown Land and immigration. The easiest way to solve the problem, because we have seen the government for almost, almost two decades, continuously said that they don't know the inventory of Crown Land. It's amazing that government can even give away Crown Land. They don't know what the inventory, what they own, what they own, what they do not own to actually lay claim to it. Because understand that even when Crown Land is given to one of the government agencies, it's no longer Crown Land. It's a proper, it becomes the property of that statutory body. And they were the ones, whoever owns the land is the one that has to take action. 
But when you start talking about the ownership of Crown Land, I am one to believe that Crown Land should not be sold. In fact, I believe that we need to start reacquiring land uh, back into the assets of Yemen. And the best way to do that is to establish a sovereign wealth fund. Let me first say a sovereign wealth fund does not disperse or anything. A sovereign wealth fund is simply a holding, a holding pen like a bank account. And I believe that all uh, assets in the Bahamas, including Crown Land, seen and unseen, known and unknown, tangible and intangible, should be deposited into a sovereign wealth fund so it will not be contaminated by the political uh, electorate. And then what we can do is we can hire a sovereign asset management company to manage these various assets. You know, we often talk about BPL and all these other things that we say. Those yes, see, Alan, you've, you've spoken about sovereign wealth fund before, and I know you brought this up before, holding the land and, and all of the uh, natural resources on that. And I appreciate that, because I know you've educated the, the public on it like, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times on it. But we're talking today now is what should happen to these people who are possessing this land? Give us right, some would, advice. I, no, no, would, no I, I, I hear the sovereign wealth fund. I, I, okay, I, so I, I'm saying what could happen to them. First of all, it, it's very You're going to talk about the sovereign wealth fund again, eh? No, yeah. Because oh. It becomes, you see, because it only takes 10 minutes. I mean, it did it for I know it's going to take 10 minutes. minutes. I only have 10 minutes left on the show. No, but I, I'm saying it did it for shark dogs and everything, and everything, right? Mm. So what I'm simply saying is a law can simply be done. They, they, if they are violating the law, we have laws in place to deal with it in the proper steps and processes for it to happen. Mm -hmm. Just follow the law, and if there's a conflict in the law, go to Parliament and change it. In the same respect for immigration. You know, immigration, these are, it's like, yes, you've heard me spoke about Crown Land, you heard me talk about immigration, you've heard me talk about all of these different things. And so, you know, I would, you want to do something, Nui? Why don't you bring someone in the ability to make a decision to discount what I've said. Somebody with authority or in law or whatever say, to simply say, you know what Seattle has said over the last decade will not work. I mean, ignoring the fact that it's worked in dozens of countries we continuously mention, but say it won't work here in the Bahamas. The same thing with immigration. And you know, I just let me understand this. You know what the problem with immigration is? Go ahead. The underlying problem with immigration is a housing issue everybody in the Bahamas. Because if you have a housing issue that's resolved, affordable housing, whether it's rental or home ownership, you could then put in immigration law. Anybody that has a work permit or permit to be in the country must show documentation that they have some place to live attached to that approval. And see, and Alan, I appreciate all of that. I see I have another caller here, and thanks very much for calling. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Nice uh, show, Mr. Nuri. Thank you I very just much. want to say, as a person who is um, willing to put myself forward to possess a piece of that crown land, it, was going, it is going about the right way. It's not all about uh, Mr. Mr. Lincoln uh, Bain, because there are other Bahamians who are, are there. They went the right way, went about the right way. I think it's just because he is a, a familiar and a very um, popular face. Persons, and he's vocal and is fighting for the people. Caller, can I engage you? Have you applied before for any I crown finish, land? Before I finish, before okay. I finish, before before you cut me. No, um, I was going to ask you a question. Before you before you engage me, please. Um, I just would want to say, Bahamian people, the Bahamian people, and the public um, have the right to know, to hear from. Other persons who are, who are willing and, and and want to possess crown land, go ahead, sir. Have you applied for any crown lands yet? My wife has, yes. Have you got any uh, any letter saying that you was granted any crown lands yet? Not granted, but acknowledged that that they yes. received a letter. Yes, they do that all the time when I send letters. They say, exactly. "Oh, proceed." And have and you? I, I applied. Hold on. Over, I, give me, I give applied. Me, for one minute. One minute. Caller. Caller. And call, I haven't gotten. Caller. Caller. Call no, one minute. And have you possessed any land since then? Go on and say that this I bought this piece and I taken it. Yes. So you are one of those people who say, "Man, I get a receipt to say that they got the letter, and I claim in this section right here." Yes. Now, if the government now calls you up and say, "Okay, I'm going to give you this land, but I'm going to give you this land out east, and this is where your land is," so are you going to leave the one that you at and go move out east? No, I would. I would. So you tell the if, government if I'm, in, if I'm not in if I'm not in anybody's way, 
I would let them know that this is the land that I possess. This is on Crown land, and this is the piece that I would like to uh, like to possess. So you but telling the government well, we, their opinions the government, don't matter? You taking this one? No, no, no. If the administration says, well, we have plans to 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 because the Ingram administration did it with with um, just the, 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 that same place right off Tony Gwilin Darlin Highway. The Ingram administration had a situation where they wanted to move people from. I can't even remember the name of the, the, the little constituency there between Eagle Electric and... Blue Hills. Go ahead. No, it's it, 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 it just that... Just, By just Eagle that Electric, little... it's called Blue Hills. Okay. They wanted to move the people. They, the were, people squatting on, they were on the land illegally, yes. They, were, they, were, they possessed the Crown land. They weren't there illegally. They possessed it. That's how you possess Crown land. When you make an application, you possess it. Possess it means you... I don't think it was Crown land. It was private land. That's why they were forced to move. They weren't forced to move. They were given. They were given. The, the company that wanted that particular land was given another option to move to Abaco, and they did that. Mm. And the people who were in that particular um, village, they were granted crown. They were granted um, documents of stay to that particular portion. Mm. It's all about knowledge. Once you get knowledge about how to go about doing it, and the will. You have to, you, you, that, that is what is, is lacking. Persons, I believe, are, are being um, told one thing and told to wait and to wait and to wait and to wait. And you don't wait no and, more. And, and, and no, you don't move because you're listening to what the, uh, the various administrations are telling you mm-hmm. and told to wait. And you will not get that unless you go to a particular MP or you. You, you, that's not supposed to be the way how it go. I believe. I believe there's supposed to be a process, and the head of the crown land says that yes, there is a constipation in the system. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you, caller. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Do we have another caller there? Because I know he's soon going to break. Go ahead, caller. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Newey. Pleasure, dear. Well, you like these kind of topics? Listen, man. I, I, I don't know if that somebody else is just being read the injunction. I read the injunction at the time of the situation. Abaco, right? And so what I could remember was it was a two way injunction, so it was it was it was the government couldn't demolish them and give them a certain time. I don't know how long that was, but what it also stipulated was that there was to be no no more reconstruction. And so uh, I think when the government proceeded to start to destroy the shanty towns here, the injunction moved to get to this to Nassau. So that was that is the main question, but I am sure that there was supposed to be no more building after the injunction was passed. So that means that it is being breached. All right, uh, it is being breached. I agree with you. That you ask the question if a naturalized person or a neutralized person can be a uh, just of the peace, right? Yeah, if go ahead. Yes, know, just as please. Then we know who are predominant. So then it, 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 there's so many complexities. It is a model of national security. But, but 52, won't that be discrimination? Once you become yeah, have Bahamian, like once you become a Bahamian citizen, so you are Bahamian with all the full entitlement. Honestly, 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 hello, uh, I'm here. And the thing is, you know, the government can kill everybody, but they can do it insidiously. They, 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 anyone can be killed. It's, 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 it is if you are conscious of what an agenda is. So that's that's. You know, I I don't agree with with the text with the caller said, but things can be done inconspicuously and insidiously with a smile on people's face. Have a good day. Thank you very much, 52. I see you have another caller. Okay, before I get that caller, let's take a break right now. Uh, you can call me on 323-6232, 325-4316, or you can always text me, and I'll read your text, 422-4796. This is Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C. Anery. <music>
The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And welcome back to Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C.A. Nuri, and we uh, have an open line um, Monday, but the people I want to talk about the crown land. They want to know if these people have the right to possess it. Um, what the government plan to do? Will they come and force the people off the land? Will they go and 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 toward the injunction and start removing the illegal immigrants there? I was told that there aren't any illegal immigrants there, and that the 500 acres that was recently cleared was done by Bahamians, and that this claim that um, there are immigrants who uh, clear the land for coal is not necessarily true. But I, I saw the director of forestry said that there has been someone who is clearing the land for quarry and clearing the land for, for the coal, the, uh, cutting down the trees, and that she's not quite sure if they have a permit. I had a little concern about that, that she's not quite sure or, uh, that they have a permit, but the gentleman said that he had a permit for 20 years and has been clearing the land for 20 years and has been qu qu doing this quarry work for 20 years. And I, I assume that if, if she can't find the, the, the license, have a cease and desist immediately. But that's just me. That's just me. I see that um, the B3As had a national track championship over the weekend, and it was poorly attended. And I'm concerned about that because we had our elite athletes attending that. All of um, Shawnee, Ebo, Weebo, you know, Anthony Strawn, Donald Thomas, and, um, and, and Stephen Gardner was in attendance, and no, or hardly anyone showed up. I think I still have that clip. Do I have that clip, producer? If you, got, if you can find it, then play it automatically and just wave to me. But um, even the, the, the athletes, even the athletes were concerned. But I have a clip there from one of the athletes. Very prideful being, and I always take on uh, to represent our country. So every time I go out, uh, I try to jump to the best of my ability and represent us as best as I could. I mean, and I've been jumping from 2006. And I feel like when I come home, I don't get the support from the BMW people. So, I mean, it is, it is what it is. You know what I mean? That's what they tell you at all, you know what I mean? No. Nah. Nah. How do you feel the way you are right now on the second? I mean, I, I, I feel good. I was uh, coming off a little injury, so I had to take my time outdoor. So, uh, just getting back into the growth, and I'm going to shake things up in the future. The Jane on the uh, snow, right? Yes, sir. What's the plan for your Jane? Uh, just go out there and represent Bahamas to the best of my abilities and hopefully bring home a medal. So Get into the finals and bring home a medal. That's, that's always the plan. So you'll be getting a bit of emotional there just now. Just talk about what it would mean for you to come home and get that support that you got your desire. I mean, like I say, I... I put Bahamas on my back every time I go out there and jump. So, I mean, I'd like to see it replicated back to me. It ain't, it ain't the general public. And, and that was Donald Thomas. I think he's a high jumper. And like I said, our, all of our elite athletes were home. They came home to participate in this track and field meet, this, this championship, which is a... a, a a, 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 a annual championship that, that, that goes on and hardly any Bahamians showed up. And I'm concerned about this, right? I know when they go internationally and, and, and go to the Olympics, we all want to take holiday and sit down and watch the TV. But we had a chance to see them live, to go out there and say, I appreciate you. And we fell short. 
That is concerning, and we need to do something with that. I see John Quell Jones is inside the, in, inside the media. She, and let's see how I can put this. Lord, I, I hope Dwight isn't listening because then I can call a name. Um, said that BTC canceled her contract or did not renew her endorsement because she's gay. Say, because she dressed up in a manly way, that it, the, her endorsement was discontinued. And of course, BTC responded, said, man, no, uh, our contracts, our endorsement is time limited. You just get it for two years, and you had it like from 2017, and just the time ran out, and we, we move on to new ones. And in fact, um, the press release from BTC said that they had the Golden Girls, um, and, they, and they also said that they had John Quell, and even Stephen uh, Gardner. And, and Joe Quell Jones responded, but she's the only one that is openly gay. So she believed that that's the, the issue on why they did not continue a contract. I hope that ain't the case, because I know BTC is sponsoring all kinds of people. They sponsored me once. So uh, that's kind of odd. But she said on international news, so that was, that was stinging. I see NIB is saying that they need an increase now and say it's, 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 it's immediate and that it's so important that they cannot postpone any incre the, the increase for NIB no further. They need to start it basically this month or the entire, the entire uh, NIB, National Insurance uh, Fund, is, it can collapse. And I know our prime minister said there's not going to be any increase anytime soon, uh, not at this present time, um, because of the, the, the economy is going through. But the specialists, the actuaries came forward and said, no, 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 you understand. If we don't start immediately, if we don't start by next month, and I want to know if Bahamians understand what, what, when they came back. These people came back, you know, and said, you don't understand. It dire. It bad. He said, we are on a precipice. We had the prime minister, but it bad. You know, if you don't start now and then have a series of increases, the entire fund is at risk. The entire fund is going to get bankrupt. And that means I'm going to get my pension, my, my little bit of money there. You know, so I'm concerned. So I, need to, I believe the prime minister needs to come back and perhaps revisit or come up with a, a different plan. But you can't just leave it like that. Right? I also see BPL uh, come back too, because I know the minister tell them they can't increase, but they said they increase, they have to increase no matter what. They get increase, and that <laughs> no matter what the people say, uh, the, the, the increase coming, the gas going up. So they, they hear, they hear uh, what, what the minister said that there won't be an increase anytime soon, but they can go hook a crook, they're growing up. I see I get a text here that said, Mr. Nuri. It's so disheartening to hear so-called educated Bahamians talk about sovereign wealth fund, but they don't want Bahamians to benefit like Qatar or, and Norway. They just want to keep it on the ground, right? And, and I, I think we need to have more discussions about um, Qatar and Norway, because I, I see Bahamians love cite these things, because our system and our jurisdiction is different, you know? Um, so uh, that's something that we need to have a, a conversation on. I see you have another caller there. Go ahead, caller. Thank you for calling. Caller, can you hear me? I see I have two minutes. But but go ahead, caller. Hello? Go ahead. Can you hear me? You have two minutes to speak. My only question is, what will stop NIB from not being overdraft again? What are the checks and balances will stop them for, if, even if they get the increase, what's going to stop them from overspending or not properly spending the money again? Because it's obvious that everybody don't, I've been sent out young, I've been uh, contributing to NIB, never, never have I once even uh, claim on anything, mm -hmm. but you're telling me now I, I'm going to increase. What's going to stop them from overspending again? And it's That's a real concern, point. caller. It's a real concern, and I, and I feel your concern, and your concern is warranted, because NIB is spent like crazy. Um, I know that uh, part of its mandate is to help build the Bahamas, so that's why government can go there and say, um, uh, we want to build this building, we need to invest in this particular uh, event. 
but it is what it is. And, and perhaps we need to have a debate on moving forward. What will the NIB be demanding? But anyway, this has been Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C.A. Nuri, and I shall see you the next time. Have a wonderful day.